So in this lecture, we'll see about some of the properties of signals. So, so far what we have seen is how to model signals mathematically. We saw some standard signals and how we can encounter such signals in an electric circuit. And we also saw some of the important uh, models, complex valued signals that are used for. So far we have seen signals and some examples of signals. So far what we have seen is how signals capture the actual voltages and currents that are passing in a circuit and then we use them as a model for the current and voltages in a circuit and do the analysis on top of it. We saw that a complex valued signal specifically the phaser helps us to do a lot of analysis in this circuits. So now we will see more properties about these signals and how these properties are useful for analyzing whatever that is going on in an electronic circuit. So if there is a resistor and a capacitor, how to analyze the signals that are passing through it. So when we know the properties of these signals, the analysis becomes much more simpler. So we will see some of the important properties that we will exploit later to perform these analysis. So the first property is what is called as an even or, or odd property. So we claim that a particular signal is even if when you reverse the signal in time, and it turns out to be the same signal even after time reverse. In other words, if the signal is symmetric about the t equal to 0, which is basically the y axis, right. So if you can draw a signal which looks something like this, okay. So let's say this is minus 1, this is 1, and this is some. So whatever is on this left hand side, that is exactly the same as the mirror image on whatever is present on this right hand side. So about the y axis, there is a symmetry or the mirror image of what is present on the left hand side is what we observe on the right hand side. So this kind of symmetry or a mirror image about the y axis is what we refer to as the even signal. So whenever there is an even signal, whatever is there on the right hand side, it appears just as a reflection on the left hand side. So if you have some value at let us say x of t naught, then the same value will be present at x of minus t naught. And whatever value is present at some x of t1, the same value will be present at x of minus t1. So you can just reverse the time. So time reversal is as good as just taking the mirror image about the y axis. So you take a time value t, let us say the signal is valued one second. The signal's value at one second will exactly be same as the signal's value at minus one second. The signal's value at 10 second will exa exactly be the same as the signal's value at minus 10 second. This is what we refer to as even symmetry. So what is the consequence of such a symmetry? The important consequence of such a symmetry is that if someone asks you to find the area of this signal, okay. Now remember uh, in several scenarios we had to integrate and differentiate whenever there is a uh, capacitor or an inductor, right. So in other words, what you are trying to do is compute the area when you are integrating. So if you want to find the integration of this signal or the area under the signal, you do not have to integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity, like from time t equals minus infinity to plus infinity. All you have to do is just integrate on one side, because integrating on one side is just the same as taking the whole integration and then multiplying with half. In other words, so whatever is present on the right hand side is the same as whatever is present on the left hand side only but that there are mirror image. So if the area under the curve on the right hand side is A, then the area under the curve on the left hand side will also be A because it is only a mirror image, the area does not change. So the total area will be 2 times A, that is what we have here. The total area we have here is the area on one side, that is the right hand side. You can also choose the left hand side, nothing will be different. So the nice property about an even signal is that if you want to compute the area under the curve, you just compute the area on and the other or one half of the plane and the other half turns out to be exactly the same. So just two times from 0 to infinity. So this is a nice property of even signals, right, basically symmetric signals. So if the signal x of t is symmetric about y axis, you call that as even and to compute the area of the signal, you claim that I will compute in only one side of the axis and the other side is automatically the same. Now 
there is also a different kind of symmetry. That symmetry is not a mirror image, but a reflection, a reflection about the origin. So, what if you have a signal something like this? So, instead of reflecting about y axis, which is what we say the mirror image, what if you reflect about the origin that is, then you will get something like this. So, let us see here it is 1, here it is minus 1. So, this is what we refer to as anti-symmetric that is if there is a value at x of t naught, the value of the signal at minus t naught will be minus of x of minus t naught. So, if you know the signal's value at let us say 1 second and the value of the signal at minus 1 second will be the negative of that. If the value of the signal is let us say 2 at 10 seconds, then the value of the signal at minus 10 seconds will be minus 2. So, whatever is the value that you have for the positive value of time will be equal to the negative of that and the negative value of time. So, this is what we refer to as x of t equals minus x of minus t. That is, whatever you see on the left hand side is the negative of the mirror image of whatever you see on the right hand side. That is it. So, you reflect and then change the sign. That is odd signal. So, if you have symmetry about the y axis where it is a mere reflection, a mere mirror image, then it is even. But if there is a mirror image and a sign flip, then what you see is an odd signal. So, this is the two different kinds of signal that we will always see, uh, we will often encounter. And this has an even nice property that the area under this odd signal is always 0. That is simply because you can split the area to be from minus infinity to 0 and between 0 and plus infinity. But we know that whatever is present on this side, if that is a, whatever that is present on this side has to be minus a because every single value that is present on right hand side has been negated or multiplied with a minus on the negative side, on the left hand side. So, which means whatever area that you compute here will be multiplied with a minus 1. And when you add up all these things, in order to compute area from minus infinity to plus infinity, you have to add up. When you add up all these things, you will end up getting 0. That is a very nice property of odd signal. So, if somebody gives you a very complicated signal and asks for or the area up under the signal, but if it turns out to be an odd signal, you do not have to do anything and then just by looking at it, you can say that, okay, this area is 0 because it is an odd signal. So, it turns out to be a very useful property to, you know, keep in mind. Now, what if a signal does not satisfy any of these symmetries? It is neither odd nor even. Well, that is possible. So, what if a signal looks like this? This does not satisfy any of the symmetry, right? But can we get an even signal or an odd signal out of it? It so turns out it is possible. And such a decomposition is what we will call as the signal decomposition into even and odd parts, okay? Okay, let us see some examples of even and odd part. Okay. So, first cos omega t. So, let us maybe plot it. So, if you plot cos omega t, how does it look like? Now, it goes on like this. Right? And on either side, it just keeps. So, it attains the maximum at 0, okay. And then when omega t is equal to pi by 2, it becomes 0 and then so on. So, this signal is symmetric about the y axis. So, whatever you see on the right hand side is the mirror image of whatever you see on the left hand side. In other words, cos omega t is equal to cos of minus omega t, which satisfies our definition of evenness. So, this is an even signal, okay. Now, what about sin omega t? So, draw that just from the diagram we can say that you know at 0 it is going to be 0 and it is going to attain the maximum at pi by 2. So, sin omega t 
has a reflection on the left hand side but also flipped in sign right in other words sin omega t is equal to minus of sin so this makes sin omega t to be an odd signal So if you compute the area under sin omega t, it's going to be zero simply because it is odd. You don't even have to do any kind of integration. Just by looking at it, you can say that it is going to be odd and so it is zero. And what if you try to compute the uh, area of cos? You can just compute on one side and then multiply it with two. So that gives you the area of the cos omega t c. Now let's see the other signal that we have here. It is a rectangular signal, okay. It is rectangular of, okay. What is a regular rectangular function? It is from minus half to plus half. So clearly this is symmetric about the y-axis. So this is an even signal, but what is given here is t minus half. There is minus, which means it moves to the right. And how much? going to the right by half a second. So from 0 to 1. So this is rect of t minus half. So this signal is neither even nor odd because it does not have symmetry about the y-axis nor does it have a reflection about the y-axis. Okay. Now what about the other signals that are here? e power minus t or t greater than 0. Once again, this is signal which is neither even nor odd. Okay. x of t, the signal that is given here. Once again, there is no kind of symmetry. So this is neither even nor odd. So which means here, we can have signals which can be neither symmetric about the y-axis nor they have anti-symmetry about the y-axis. But it can so happen that these signals can be decomposed into even and odd parts, okay? so. What does this mean? Given any signal, you can always separate them into an even part and an odd part. This is like every human being has a good, uh, a good heart and, uh, you know, every, so this is like every human being has, you know, a goodness in him and, and some evil component in him, right? So this is like, there is a even component and an odd component inside every signal. So you can, decompose every signal into an even part and an odd part.